Assalamu alaikum. This is Halima and welcome to another episode of Oran podcast. Today we have uh one of the few women investors in Pakistan, Ms. Banakwi. She's also an investor in Oran, um full disclosure. Um and we are here to talk about her journey as an investor in an ecosystem like Pakistan. Um so welcome Ms. Ba. Thank you so much for doing this for us. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here and I'm very excited to be an investor in Oran. Thank you so much. We're very excited to have you as well. So, Ms. Ba, like there is um this chatter around women um invest investors and women entrepreneurs, right? Like we get always tagged that with that gender. What does it mean? What does it mean to be a woman investor? Yeah. Uh, that's such a great question, Halima. For me, I'm an investor. Um and I think that's where it starts, right? I think the fact that I'm a woman or that you know and you're a founder the fact that you're a woman just adds another layer on top of it so I think we need to move away from saying an investor is male and a female investor is is a female investor yeah. just like saying a founder is male and then a female founder so I know you also get yeah, tagged as yeah. a female yeah. founder um so I'd love to see a point where we stop using these gendered expectations of what it means to be an investor or a founder For me being a woman investor starts with being an investor mm. um and what I bring to the table uh, is all of the things around my background my perspective and being a woman obviously plays into that so I'm very proud that I bring a female perspective into how I invest uh but I also kind of always you know don't like the way sometimes people are like oh you know you're because you're a woman yeah, investor yeah. you're kind of somehow different i think everybody brings something different to the table i have a background in finance my partner kulsum who's also a woman yeah. investor uh has a background in working with startups and has had her own startup for the last decade so we all bring different things to the table um and being women is just one of those things yeah. to me so it's an add on so does that add on um get you questions that sometimes are like are you questioning my credibility because i'm a woman um or like have you had experiences where you're just like it why does it matter what gender i am yeah absolutely i think um i also feel like sometimes we get asked questions which um around trying to assess our credibility even though we are the ones that have been in the market for the last decade yeah. building with startups yeah. like my career in finance is now at 24 years uh kulsum has been building invest to innovate our yeah. sister company in pakistan for a decade and so i think we do ask get asked questions uh, to validate credibility where i feel like sometimes with men um people take it at face value yeah. um and so not that i like doing it but i've had conversations where I've had to bring in that oh you know when I started in corporate banking in 1998 those, yeah yeah and then suddenly people sort of understand that I've been in this space for the last two decades yeah. so I think unfortunately sometimes we have to establish credibility where I feel like men often get taken at face value and they and they start from a, a point of either neutrality or plus which is which is super frustrating like as a founder i can tell you that i've had experiences where people have asked me or told me actually that i sell like a man um yeah. and that's just slightly condescending like you, why does it why does that have to play into i am an entrepreneur i have my own personality and i'm here to build and i'm here to do the same kind of things that any other entrepreneur would want to do or follow their passions but the questions that we get asked are more around our ambition sometimes gets questioned right and which is which is very frustrating so collectively what does what needs to change to change those perspectives and i i don't think this is just a pakistani problem it's a global problem it's totally a global problem especially women in entrepreneurship and women in finance are still really small single digits in terms yeah. of percentages um and i think there's a lot of work to be done in a market like in a country like pakistan which tends to be patriarchal anyway where women are seen as daughters and sisters and mothers uh first yeah. um there is a lot more work to be done so i think i don't think any one of us individually can do that but i do think continuing to do the work that we do defining uh standards holding ourselves accountable um and not asking for free passes because we're women yeah. i think all of us that you know a lot of us that are in our circle and we know a lot of people yeah. collectively also mutually who are just doing the work yeah um just like men are doing the work and like i would love to see a point where we get to not expecting not having preconceived notions but i think there's a long way to go unfortunately i think it does take all of us continuing to do the work and educate 
I also think sometimes the burden shouldn't be on on us Absolutely. only. Um, it's like saying that you know, it's like asking uh, women to justify things around women issues, whereas a lot of times, like you know, male allies are just as important and sometimes even more so. Yeah. So I think it does take a village in that sense, 100%. and I think it's evolution, um, evolution of mindsets and perceptions, and I think also um, precedent setting. Absolutely. Um, more and more, more and more people need to come in from both genders to come in and be able to collectively understand that this problem can't be solved by one. Like you can't have one section of the community solving for this problem. It is a collective problem. Absolutely. And I have you seen progress happen though? I have seen progress. I have seen progress. I think this is generally, if we take a step back, even you know, not looking at just women investors, but look at women's movement and women's rights. Yeah, we came from a point of not just in Pakistan globally, be but Pakistan maybe we came from a point of saying, okay, we'll just get women in to tick the box because they're making so much noise about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And I think once you had women on boards, once you had women founders, once you had women investors, people recognized. How much more they bring to the table, or or how much equally what they bring to the table, yeah. just being different, yeah. and that diversity starts showing after a while. Yeah. So I think, unfortunately, in the beginning, you need to take steps um, actively, um, maybe to check the box, yeah. and then people will realize how important diversity is. And it's not just gender; it's also ethnicity, it's yeah. background, yeah. it's uh, it's sexual orientation, um, uh, it's um, you know social uh, social uh, strata. A lot of things go into it, but I feel like sometimes these things start with pushing others to comply. Mm. Um, and then it comes to the point where people start celebrating it. And I yeah. think we need to get to the point where we celebrate diversity. Yeah. We're not having a woman on a panel because Baki Lo Kya Kenge yeah. and everybody's going to go down my yeah. throat on Twitter because yeah. I did a manual. <laughs> the point is, we should have women on panels because we value their input and it, their voice. Exactly. And we feel like they have something to say. But we're not there yet, we're especially there in, yet. in Pakistan. We're not there. We're still pushing those. We're still not comfortable bringing a woman in a decision making position and saying that we're going to we're going to go with what she's saying, yeah. um, especially in the financial industry. Right. I'm sure you've had some experiences where you were like, what the hell is happening? You want to share some of those experiences? Um, I think. Yeah, I. I it's funny, we were having this conversation earlier uh, over lunch and we were just saying that, you know, when I started, I was a lot younger. I think my perspective has changed as I've grown older. But in the last 20 years, the, the space around me has also changed. When I started in finance, I wanted to be one of the guys. Yeah. Like I had to prove that I could do what men could do. I, at this point in my life and where the world is today, I don't feel like I have to prove what men can do. I can do more than what men can yeah. do. And I can be a woman and bring a softer side of things. So there are a lot of examples where initially, like I wouldn't, and only in hindsight, I look back and I think that, wow, that was inappropriate. Or why did I put myself in a position where I kind of had to hide the fact that I'm a woman yeah. rather than celebrate it? Yeah. So I don't have one incident that comes to mind, but there are a lot of those Early, earlier in my career, early when I was younger as well, uh, examples of situations where, you know, I maybe inappropriate jokes, for example, yeah. in the workplace. Yeah. Um, now there's a lot more awareness of this, but you know, I was like working in finance back in you know in the late '90s, so there was a lot that I had kind of had to look the other way or not take personally or even just laugh off as one yeah. of the guys. I don't think I'd do that today. Yeah. I, I think I've evolved as a person as well. That's really great to hear. I think in in as an entrepreneur, um, or even like somebody in the banking space early on, I had a very similar kind of an experience where I had to prove to be one of the guys to be taken seriously and push those boundaries constantly. When if I look back and I'm just like, why did I even do this? Right? Yeah. It sounds wrong. There was so much wrong in. I was letting go of my comfort zone and who I was as an individual yeah. um, and that takes away from um, from from your own personality right um, and that those are the kinds of problems that we want to be able to solve for especially in this ecosystem yeah. uh, where the representation is and diversity is on the um, lower side um, what what kind of work are you doing right now to encourage that diversity to come out yeah I think look um, I would say as women um, we have a responsibility because we are role models yeah and I think we need to take that responsibility seriously um, and 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 I would love to see many more women come up in finance in investing in entrepreneurship and being founders um, so so first is recognizing that we have a responsibility because 
we're carrying the flag to a certain extent i would love for it not to be the case yeah. but it is the case yeah, right yeah, now yeah. there are a handful of women at you know at that level so i think one is by being ourselves and being authentic and celebrating being women yeah. uh we can hopefully inspire others who can say okay if they can do it i can do it too so that's one aspect of it and and honestly that's not effort on your and my part that's just by us being who we are yeah. and 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 reminding ourselves to be authentic i think the other is there are things that we can do to mentor other women um i know you do that yeah. i do that as well uh, my partner kusum does too where we see women that um you know are struggling with certain things which we may have figured out yeah being a woman or even just work around the startup space or investing or finance i think it's important for us to mentor them because very often they don't get access to those mentor yeah. that mentorship so there's something that we can do actively um i think the other thing is educating male allies and peers um by bringing by bringing more women up ourselves we can set examples so one i'll give you an example of that uh we are we don't invest only in women we invest in yeah. great founders yeah. Yeah. um but we are actively looking for women to be those great founders yeah. um and if we feel like if we step back and wait for the market to work the way the market works those will those women won't necessarily come to us because the funnel is is very it's like, yeah. it's competitive yeah. so what kusum and i do is like we we actively look for good female founders uh to bring them into our pipeline because if we sit back we won't get to see them yeah. but um once we bring them in um we evaluate them from a commercial perspective mm. so we're being I fair to them that. as well we're yeah. not giving any handouts um and we're not saying you know we must invest in someone because they are women and i think it's a chicken and egg problem it is. um where globally women founders don't get funded enough so the struggle is harder on that front and then uh, the those who make it are not being celebrated enough yeah. as well i mean there's research that actually shows that women founders when sitting in front of investors get asked questions where they end up having to be defensive yeah whereas male founders get answered questions get asked questions where the answers can be aspirational yeah um and as as women investors that's something we're very conscious of like i i i try to be conscious of not asking the kinds of questions that potentially a male investor would ask and and so there are practical things we can do to change um how we evaluate uh, or interact with you know absolutely women founders. and i think understanding those biases as well right like you talked about the education awareness of it that being cognizant that this question can come across as um as as something that you are questioning the per, the entrepreneur's ability to build yeah. and i've had those conversations and i've had those where i've come out of those conversations feeling defeated i'm just like what am i doing wrong yeah. right like what can i do my numbers are there this traction everything makes sense how can i prove to the person in front that this is an investment worthy business yeah um which is really really unfortunate yeah. what would be um one advice or tip you would want to give to women who are wanting to start their um uh, businesses yeah. um as an investor like what can they do what should they be doing um and how collectively this platform can also support them yeah i think look i first of all i love the work that oran is doing i think getting women to understand finance is so important because women often have a very tough relationship with finance and i know you guys yeah. have been talking yeah. about it and and you know helping people in the community so i think that's a really really important important job and that goes beyond an entrepreneur or a founder that's just basic uh, interaction yeah. with money yeah. and yeah. finance yeah. um and that's across the world pakistan is no exception i think pakistan more so because of the structure of the in industry around us it's harder for women to open a bank account it's harder for them to get uh credit checks yeah. you know etc so so one is like removing barriers for just women and their interaction with finance and bringing in more understanding and experience there um education i think the other thing is that one thing that i've seen often is i would group it into two i would say there's a group of women that are very entrepreneurial yeah. but they are running a small business from home yeah. they might be be home chefs they might have a clothes design business they might uh you know I mean they might be doing they might be teaching kids at home mm -hmm. um and i think that's okay i think there a lot of times women are balancing commitment to family commitment to other things as well as wanting to earn a living being independent um so i would say i you know if if those women want to grow we can help with yeah. things yeah. but if they don't want to that's okay that's as well so i think it's important to say that you can be entrepreneurial but you don't have to be a quote unquote startup founder that's raising a lot yeah. of money yeah. Yeah. and that's okay yeah. Yeah. the other thing that i would say is that if you're a startup founder and you want to raise money and you want to grow 
usko bhi i would have divided into two i would say everyone doesn't have to raise vc money or or, or institutional investor money um so you need to look at what is right for you um there are there are resources that you can look at online there are programs that you can join incubators accelerators that help you figure out there are boot camps also that happen like okay what is the business that i want to do that i'm good at that i'm excited about and how can this business grow will it ge generate revenue and grow from there or do i need external money if i need external money is it grants is it government funding is it friends and family if you have if you're privileged yeah. and you have friends and family who have money or as we call it friends family and yeah. fools <laughs> um and and if it all what is the right kind of partnership over there and then there's a bucket of women that are starting companies which could have that venture trajectory yeah. so i think it's important to divide all of these into different groups and understand that not the right answer is not the same for it and go through that entire education process to understand what would also suit your lifestyle and personality absolutely and i would say this for men as well by yeah, the way this 100%. is this is it's just that we see men uh often doing more formal businesses often outside the home and we see women often doing more informal businesses yeah. more from the home but this idea of like figuring out where you want to get to and and what the scope of it yeah. of your startup is, is is the same across yeah. genders i think in the last bucket where where people like us come in and investors come in where you are evaluating the startup and the fast growing company i think there it's important to do your homework there's a lot of work on there's a lot of opportunity to look at on things online uh funds have websites where you can write in send in your pitch yeah. deck you have resources that will help you build a pitch deck yeah. you have resources online that you can just access um learnings around how to approach investors all of that is there you just have to put in a bit of work um and look for it yeah. then and comes, also have that resilience to go through the rejections because it is not an easy process no and as fund managers you know we're we're the way funds work we raise for our fund so i can totally empathize yeah. because we also fundraise yeah. it's soul crushing it's yeah. really really hard and so yeah to your point you have to be resilient and believe in the idea but also be open to feedback 100%. and if you're continuing 100%. to hear something from the outside understand where it is that you need to maybe change a little bit of what you're doing yeah. to then look potentially grow further yeah absolutely and i think one of the things that you brought up around relation to money uh, that we the work that oran's doing and right? uh, changing that relationship with money and building financial capacity for women what has your journey been like and what has your relationship with money been like yeah i think for me um look my my i'll tell you a little bit about my background my father was in the navy so pretty humble in terms of you know financially we were not super well off but yeah. my parents invested in our education and made sure that my brother and i went to good schools we spoke english we again not that there's anything yeah. wrong with speaking urdu but we yeah. were just our parents were focused on education which would help us continue to succeed yeah. um and i think i was very privileged from the perspective of education mm -hmm. Once I went to IBA that privilege continued I will acknowledge that um and then I joined City Bank mm -hmm. it wasn't until I started working and earning for myself that I actually realized what it feels like yeah. to have money of yeah. your own yeah. because my parents never let us feel that we were wanting of anything but we never had we never traveled abroad mm -hmm. we were not able to afford a lot of things and we got a bit of pocket money us zamane mein 100 rupees milte the we were so happy with it so i think it wasn't until i started earning yeah. um for myself and in a corporate environment where there was an you know you could be promoted you could get a bonus there was a very direct relationship between um reward uh, between um, effort and reward mm. and i think that was interesting for me because i realized okay if i work hard i can be promoted make, yeah. and i can make more money and i can be and i can get bonuses um but i think and i think that continued over time i also at one point in my career moved to a non-profit um which for me i think was a big risk because i'd been in a very steady corporate career yeah. but i think it also kind of helped me see that my relationship to money uh i don't value money for what it can buy but i value it for the security it provides me and that's my personal Absolutely. relationship yeah. so i think over time i've recognized that when i was younger i was kind of you just go through the motions it's only in hindsight yeah. that you recognize yeah. it but i think once i did move to a non-profit that decision helped me recognize my own relationship meaning that i need a i need some amount to be comfortable but i'm not aspirational in terms of i need to earn a lot more yeah. money yeah yeah but having said that there's nothing wrong with that either Absolutely like as a not. as a fund manager um i want my fund to be really successful i want to earn more money um i want to i mean i am you know mashallah financially independent but i also 
I want to be able to make more money and I want to save and I want to be able to retire when yeah. I'm relatively able to enjoy yeah. it and nothing wrong with yeah. that. So I think we have to come into our own to recognize what we need the money for. But I do think that the first milestone there was get my first job. Um, the second milestone was moving from corporate to uh, sort of non-profit. non-profit. Um, and I think now in a space where a fund is so focused on meaning, making money because you have to return to your investors, yes. we need to make good bets. So when yeah. we invest in companies like yours and others, we invest in founders where we think they're going to be really successful. Yeah. So we're supporting others make money as yeah. well. Um, and there's nothing wrong with making money. And I think women often, and I think it's a cultural thing yeah. for Pakistanis yeah. also, yeah. Uh, we don't talk about money. 100%. It's seen as crude. And that's fine. But it's very uncomfortable, right? It like is especially, very uncomfortable. Especially women talking about money. Yeah. Because our credibility is less when we talk about money. But that having that aspiration that we want to be financially independent and once you've reached that financial independence, you want to be able to make more money. Yeah. That is looked down upon or like shunned uh, because dreams yeah. And you know, I'd also say, I recognize that all women don't work and all women don't have an independent income stream. But I would also say that for women that have access to some funds, maybe maybe they're married and their husband is uh, giving them, you know, ghar chalane ke yeah. paise. Uh, there are ways to save them in within that. There are ways to multiply that. Um, and there are, there that understanding of your relationship with money can really help yeah. with that. Yeah. So again, it's great to be financially independent and I would strongly recommend that to every woman or every man because I think even if it's something small that you're doing, um, you know, not relying on somebody else, I mean, you know, on a very on a totally different tangent like we know people that stay in bad marriages because yeah. they feel like what's going to happen if I leave my kids or myself like how am I going to support myself so I think it's it's really important for women to be financially independent and uh, it doesn't mean that you have to be a karorpati or, may, or make 100%. lacks of money 100%. but just some to be able to yeah. sustain yourself and and coming out and asking for those uncomfortable questions right that, that's why we've created Oran um, to be able to provide that space for women to be able to have those very hard conversations around money whether you have it or not have yeah. it and build that capacity for yourself ki allah na kare kuch bhi ho jata hai aapki zindagi mein aap support apne aap ko kar sako ya apni family ko kar yeah, sako exactly. but that 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 mindset is there's a there's a long way to go to change that mindset across board across socioeconomic classes. Totally, and it's not just Pakistan. Pakistan, it is harder because it's a very we are a patriarchal society. I mean, US, me there's a movement right now to compensate women who stay at home and take care of their kids yeah. because uh, there is labor that's being put into yeah. that, right? Yeah. And so there's this conversation of like who will who will compensate them? Is it the government? Yeah. Is it um, other organizations? That but the recognition is starting to say. If you're at home and you're a homemaker, or if you're not earning, you're, there's an opportunity cost to that. And Absolutely. how does that get compensated? Yeah. So it does come back to money. And um, I think in Pakistan, we're still a long way yeah. away from there. But I do think women in Pakistan are so much more aware now than they were maybe 10, 15, 20 yes. years ago. Social media is great. Um, I think opportunities like Oran presents, like you don't have to leave your house to be able to participate in something like this. I think it's important and I think it goes a long way in empowering women to take other decisions for themselves. But finance is such a key aspect. It is such a critical part of your lifestyle, right? And we, we forget about it. Like if you talk about even in relationships, um, money is usually the point of problems that occurs very often um, and in Pakistan like while women might not be large in large majority chief wage earners they're actually the ones who make decisions in their households they are the budget ministers and giving them those tools and platforms where they're able to empower themselves and have agency over their own money uh, goes a long way because that then your entire household can have an upward mobility totally and then this is a statistic that you actually yeah. shared is that um, um, you know, a large percentage of women, when if you give women money, and this has been proven through microfinance yeah, and others, uh, um, she will spend it on her children, yeah. education, and the household. Um, whereas very often if you give men the same amount of money and they're at home, th it's, it's a very individualistic. They take it, women take it more as a community and men take it as a very individualistic approach towards finance. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, Mizba, for having this conversation with us. And I'm sure our viewers would had really enjoyed having this conversation with us as well. If you have any questions um, around investments and around women in finance, 
happy to share more uh, tips and tricks around it, um, how to break into this career, how to manage your finances. Please leave us comments and we will get back to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.